This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Right, well, let's look at um, question three of section B of the um, paper F5 specimen exam. Uh, look at the requirements part A, calculate the cost and quoted price of a GC and DX using activity-based costing, so it's immediately clear what topic we're being tested on. Part B, suggest possible pricing strategies for the two products, which BB sells, and suggest one reason of the high prices for the post. All right, now that may not, not mean much yet because we haven't read the body of it, but do appreciate part B is simply writing. There's five marks writing. And so however good you are at arithmetic, um, part A would only just be passing the exam one silly mistake and you'd have failed unless you've actually done something for part B. All right, let's have a go. Part A, which is the numbers. Let's read it. Brick by Brick is a business which provides a range of building services to the public. We've recently been asked to quote for garage conversions, GC, and extensions to properties EX. And we found we're winning fewer GC contracts than expected. We have a policy of pricing all jobs at budgeted total cost plus 50%. OVEDs are currently absorbed on a labour hour basis, uh, giving a budgeted total cost of 11,000 for each GC and 20,500 for each EX. Consequently, the products currently are priced at 16,537.50. You see, the budget cost at the moment for a GC is 11,000. They're adding on 50%, 5,500. So currently, they're selling at 16500 We're considering moving to an activity-based cost approach, and you're provided with the following. Well, three types of overheads. We told the driver, we told the total number of activities. And below a typical GC costs 3500 in materials and takes 300 labour hours. It requires one site visit by a supervisor and one a planning document. Uh, an EX costs 8,000 in materials and takes 500 hours. Six site visits and five planning documents. In all cases, labour is paid 15 per hour. And so, that's actually a very, very standard question, surely. You should have come across plenty like this before. Our job is to do a new cost card for each product, a GC and an EX. Obviously using activity-based costing. And it starts off very easy, that the um, little bit below the uh, table, uh, materials, a GC takes 3,500 materials, Further along, a typical EX is 8,000 for materials. May only be half a mark, but an easy half mark. In addition, there's labour. A GC takes 300 hours. And right at the end, it says labour is paid $15 per hour. So for 500. An EX that takes 500 hours and again labour 15 so 7500 so get nice and easy uh, where the work uh, comes and not most of those five marks is the overheads uh, and usually I would show the whole of the overheads as separate workings. Here, though, I don't think we actually need to. I'll do them one by one straight on the cost card. So let's make a start with three categories there. The first is supervisors. There's 90,000 overheads. Now, we're told the number of activities. There are 500 site visits per year. And below the table it tells us 
A GC needs one site visit. Every EX requires six. And so I will show a little bit of workings. I'll call it workings one. We know what the total overhead is. It's 90,000. <clears throat> uh, we know what the uh, driver is. It's site visits and there are 500 visits a year. And so supervisors are costing us 180 per site visit. And now we can go back to our costings because we know that a GC takes, where is it, one site visit? And I just, I forgot what figure I worked out, 180. So we charge 180 to a GC, whereas an EX requires six site visits. And so each EX will be charged with 480. 1080. And basically the same approach for each of them. What about the next one? Planners. Again, show your workings. You could have done, you know, keep saying silly mistakes are half a mark, provided it's clear you know what you're doing. However, for planners, the total overhead is 70. Uh, the total number of documents, the activity is 250. And so what does that come to? 280 per document. Now we can go back to the cost card because it tells us that each GC needs, where are we, one planning document. Each EX, six visits and five planning documents. Uh, 1400. And finally, property related. Total of N to 40,000. Total number of activities, well, the activities labour hours, there are 40,000 hours. So $6 per labour hour. And now we can go back and finish our costings. Because each GC takes 300 hours. $6 an hour is 1,800. Each EX, we had it earlier, where is it? It takes 500 hours. $3,000. And we're virtually there. Let's add them up. The total cost for a GC, three and a half, eight thousand, eight four sixty, nine four sixty. 8460, 9460, I think 10,260. Uh, for an EX, 815,579,80, But no, Part A wanted to know the cost and the quoted price. Well, their policy is the um, second paragraph. We price all jobs at budgeted total cost plus 50%. And so GC, 50% uh, of 10 to 60 is 5130, giving a price of 15390. Whereas an EX, 50% is 10490, giving a total price of 31470. I've done my arithmetic right. 
So that's part A. What about part B? It says, suggest possible uh, pricing strategies for the two products and suggest one reason other than high prices for the current poor sales of GC. Now, as soon as you see pricing strategy, it's tempting to think of what we normally learn in pricing strategies, penetration pricing and things. That's not really relevant here. The point is, if we use activity-based costing, which is a better way of doing things, there are the costs, and if we want to carry on with our same policy of adding on 50%, there are the selling prices. At the moment, though, we're costing differently, and the current selling prices, the selling price for GC is 16500 and the current price for an EX is thirty-seven fifty. And so what does that suggest? Again, assuming we want to keep our 50% profit margin, then it would suggest that EX, we should increase the price. We're not charging enough. All right, we are profitable. You know, it's 30,000 as against cost of 20,000. But we're not getting the 50% we expected, so we should consider increasing the price. Uh, the one danger, of course, is if you put the price up, you may sell less. We don't know, but we'd certainly need to consider increasing. On the other hand, of course, GC at the moment, in a sense, we're charging too much. You know, costing properly, we're getting much more than 50% uh, margin. And so we can afford to drop the price. Uh, now, again, it depends. I mean, it, it, there's no point in dropping the price if it doesn't gain us any customers. If customers are still prepared to pay 16500 then let them pay it. But we can afford to drop the price and still make 50%. And it would be worth dropping the price if it meant we got more business. So that's really what she was after there. I'm not writing it out in full. You can read her answer. But that's what we're after. Uh, oh, I'm not going to repeat it. However, do note there were two things being asked. That was the first bit, suggest possible pricing strategies. It also said, suggest one reason other than high prices for the current poor sales of GC. Well, this isn't learning, it's not technical. It's more using a bit of common sense. That um, it says right at the top, we're winning fewer GC contracts than expected. Well, although price can be a factor, she said, one reason other than prices, it could be that we're not doing a good enough job. But if we've got a bad reputation or if, uh, you know, we're building, GC, we're doing garage conversions that aren't very good, poor quality, then I think you'd expect to be losing business. Um, they have nothing to do with actual price that's being charged. So I, I would say the quality of the work. So that's question three.